Hey, what's going on, everybody? I was looking at Solana here and a few others, and I'm a little, uh, my eyes are opening up more and more for a correction to happen. Now, obviously, we don't have to have a correction. This is not financial advice, but I think it's probably coming soon. If not, we are in it now. Obviously, we can get a little bit higher, but I think a correction is coming. The reason why is um, we have a one, two, and a three. So this is just a short-term correction, right? So this is a one, two, right? And then we have one, two, three, four, five. So this whole thing is a one, two, three, four, five. So we should get some correction, uh, maybe a little correction here, right? Maybe it's a, a flat like this, and then we continue higher. Either way, it looks like we have a correction. Another reason why is because if you look at the RSI, right? Looking at the four-day chart here, we have divergence between the fourth and the fifth, right? On the RSI. So, and then it also looks a little extended. Um, and then we're also right into the resistance level from here, here, and here, right? So Solana looks like it can use a little bit of a correction. And that would be bullish. That would be healthy. That's what we need. That's what that's what we should have, right? Now, obviously, this thing can just continue busting out, right, easily. Um, no problem. But um, it hasn't tested the bull market support band. And this breakout, so remember what we talked about the flats, right? So look at this. So we have a high here. We come up, we impulse up, and we make a high. Then we correct down, fair enough, and then you assume a, a breakout. But we did, but look at this. It's a chop, 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 chop. And then we broke the high. And now, look at this. We're not having any follow through. Or at least it's taking some time. Maybe we will Monday, Tuesday, we'll get some follow through. But at the moment, <clears throat> excuse me, at the moment, it looks like a flat. So we have an A, B, and maybe we get C. And the C lay can then backtest the bull market support band. Then I would feel much more comfortable with higher prices. But I can't get on board with the higher prices at the moment until we get this sort of correction out of the way. Now, obviously, I can change my mind once this happens. So here's the high. We have a correction, right? And if this is a one, two, one, two, and now another one, two, and now we're about to get going here, then obviously that could happen, right? Um, Obviously, we'd have to wait till Monday or Tuesday when we get some more volume in the market. But I'm just saying, right now, it looks like a flat, then continuation. I would prefer that rather than it continuing rocking to the upside. Why? Because if we get this flat, right, which is essentially a, a double fake out, right? So you correct to the downside, you break out, and you fake out. Then you come down, everybody thinks it could be an expanded flat, right? Or it could be a running flat, right? Or a regular flat. Either way, this A, B, C, it cools off the oscillators, right? It resets the RSI. And then you have a clear one, two, three. You have a three-wave correction, which then is able. And then you get to back test the bull market support band right so i am rooting for a correction i'm not saying we're gonna get one i'm what i'm saying here is it looks like we definitely need one it looks like we really need one now i'm not saying that for the whole market right but solana looks like it needs one um now when i go to bitcoin um i mean look at pepe Right. I mean, it still looks very bullish. It still looks like, hey, it's ready to continue marching to the upside. Right. I mean, obviously that could happen. But it also looks a little bit of, uh, choppy. Now, uh, 
we can have this, you know, A, and then you have one, two, three, and B, right? So one, two, three, and B, and then you can get another one, two, three, and then go. So then it would be another flat where you have the high, you come up, you take out the high, but then you pull back and then you go. Now this pullback can be an expanded flat. It can pull back just a little bit, right? That would be an option uh, as a flat. Another bullish way to look at it is to say, no, this is not a flat. This is a um, sort of a, uh, an, a, an A, B, C in here, correction. And then we have a one, two, and now we're up, we have a one again. So maybe we come down for a two and then we continue higher, right? Or maybe we flag out and then continue higher. So just be cautious. I'm not saying it's gonna go up. I'm not saying it's gonna go down. If I had to pick, I would say, let's come down. Let's have a flat. Let's cool off the oscillators. Let's reset the RSI. That way we can have much more momentum moving forward, right? Because it's all about momentum. Now, when I look at something like Algorand, um, I guess you can, it doesn't have that appearance. So it's a little bit confusing, right? Some coins look like they need one. Some coins look like, hey, they're just getting started. So you got to know what you're in, right? So when I look at Algorand, right, you have a top, you have a big impulse to the downside, or you have a big drop to the uh, liquidation, right? And then you have this big pump. And now you have this sort of one, two here. So we could continue pumping it massively, right? Um, another way you can look at it is this is a one, two, and a three, right? So an A, B, and a C. We can still have a flat in here, right? Um, this one doesn't look like that because it's not real choppy. It's sort of a massive impulse. So it's a little bit, you know, what I'm saying here is tread lightly, you know, I, you know, tiptoe. I like to tiptoe around crypto. I even might change my channel, right? Because uh, tiptoe crypto, I, I like the sound of that. Um, anyway, looking at Bitcoin, it also looks three wave-ish, right? And this is the this is sort of the the concern. It's not a concern. It's just more like, hey, we could have a correction, and it wouldn't be the end of the world. It would actually be much needed, right? Now you could say, well, what about this? This was a massive correction. It was, but that was through price. I'm talking about through time. And when I'm speaking in time, I'm talking about consolidation, right? We need some consolidation. We need people to get used to this new price era, right? Because it's like you have a big markup in price, right? People need to get used to these new higher prices. Because when the prices continue to go, 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 we run out of buyers. There's no more buyers, right? So then what happens? We have a price correction, right? So instead of that, let's have more of a ranging sort of consolidation process. So looking at Bitcoin, obviously I've been talking about a correction um for the last week or so saying hey this looks like we have one two three four and five and in the fifth wave we have one two three four five right and in all of that fifth wave we have this here which is a one one two three here was that flat and then five. So one, two, three, four, five, right? Now look at wave four, look what it did. And here was, the, here was the best example on my channel of the flat when I called it right in here. I said, hey, this could be a flat, and it was. So you have a top, you run up to the top, right? So you, you sort of consolidate, and then bam, you run up to the top. So look at this, you consolidate here, and you run up to the top. This take a mental screenshot of that then you have a pullback and then you have this chop 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 right and then you break the top you break this top but then look what happens you don't have any follow through instead you kind of just go sideways a bit and then drop so you thought you were going up we were going down 
people thought we were going down, but we were going back up. And that's a double fake out, right? So, let me label it like this. We have an A, B, and then a C. And that's all it is, right? And then we have here um, a one, two, this is three, this is four, and now we're getting five, right? And then wave five is way up here. And inside of wave five, we have one, two, um, three, four, and five. So that's the fifth of the fifth, right? So that's why I'm saying, hey, this can get pretty, um, uh, we can have a pretty decent correction here. Now it can either be um, something like this, where we sort of range in here before we break out. Remember the fractal that I talked about last time Bitcoin broke out. This is important. I think this is one of the most important videos I'm doing this uh, this week, right? And let me get back over here. Where are you at? Uh, okay, let me go to the higher time frame so it doesn't take so long to get back to where I need to get. So right here. So this is the last time we broke out into a new all-time high. So here's the all-time high right here, back in 2017, okay? And then I put a line here, and I put it right there, right? Um, well, actually, on the market cap, I'm gonna have to do it on the price because the market cap doesn't give me the example that I'm looking for. So that was the market cap of Bitcoin. Let me get to the um, the actual Bitcoin price. So one moment here, bear with me. Okay, so put the line right there. So here's the all time high right here. And then we ran up to the all time high and look what happened. We had a, we had a, a, a running flat right here, right? We came up, we had this sharp move to the downside then we came up and we broke out. It looked like, hey, we're gonna go to the moon. But look, what happened? We had this sort of bull flag in here. And I talked about this already on two videos, talking about the previous break of the all-time high, what it looked like. And even the time before that, it looked similar. We also had the same type of situation, right? Where you have this um, A, B, and then a C, and then we continue higher, right? So, and that whole thing took 20 days, or like, I think, what was it, three weeks or four weeks? About a month, right? And then the last time before that, this is what happened. So this was another flat here. Look at this. We have an A, a B, and a C, right? So that whole thing, right from a b c see here was a top here we had a sharp move down and then we went chop 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 and we broke out but look what happened we went sideways look at all those candles right there see uh right here one so one second you had this daily candle here 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 and here so you had one two three four five you had five days this was the important part with no follow through, right? It was just sort of stuck here, which gives me the impression, okay, maybe this is a flat, right? And it was. Um, so A, B, C, and then we go. So maybe Bitcoin is somewhere around here currently, right? So going back to the current price, it's definitely moving a lot faster, right? And it and it looks like a, a lot smaller. So that that's why I have to sort of zoom in here to the four hour chart. So maybe, right, you have this sudden move drop, this sudden move down, right? You have this, um, and here's, this one actually looks even a little bit more bearish, 
because you have a you have this three wave move it's a clear three wave move one two three now if we if this third wave continues to go a little bit higher then we get four then we get five then boom you could change your mind right or it's probably a diagonal but for now it looks like an a b right so right now um it was five candles compared to that time frame so it was five days so we'll say this is the four hour chart so we'll say five candles so we're on we're already on candle number three right so i would say this if we it's really hard to because we're getting to the weekend it's kind of sort of what's going to happen right so you really have to wait till like sunday night or monday morning uh up to tuesday to really figure this out but from what i can tell it's starting to look like a flat just like solana solana looks like a really good example so you have the high right here you have this sharp move down you come out you take out the high but you don't continue moving instead you come all the way back down and create a flat right some type of correction in here now this flat can turn into another move to the upside this flat can just start to range before we break out or worst case scenario right this is a um you know some type of move that we're consolidating then we're going to start going down for lower prices and maybe back test uh, 50 between 50 and 53k this range in here see this range we consolidate we broke out of the range but we never back tested it but the, if we do that then that will be the first time in bitcoin's history that it actually went up to the all-time high then pulled back that much because normally it gets to the all-time high and it sort of ranges then it breaks out if it ranges and then it falls down here um i'll have to look at the percentage move on that but i guess it could still fall into a correction because i know before let's see from here down so it's about a 25 percent correction so it's pretty steep right i think um the last one wasn't that bad so not saying that's going to happen by the way but if this does start a range in here that's a good thing i've always said that's a good thing because if we do get this correction, for example, um, let's say, you know, you get this A, B, and a C, right? And then Bitcoin starts to move up. As Bitcoin starts to move up, I really think the altcoins are going to perform pretty good. Not all of them, but I think a good amount of them that are still relatively cheap and closer to their breakout range closer to the bull market support band will have a good break right if bitcoin breaks out obviously they're going to do good but even if it doesn't break out and it starts to sort of range in here some type of distribution range where we just go sideways i've been waiting for my sideways range right i've been waiting for that same thing that happened over here the sideways range right where alt started to you know catch up a, a bit so if we get another one of these maybe not that big um then we can catch up uh, some of the altcoins can right if bitcoin ranges and then it breaks out then you know the alts are really gonna um, start to move right so it, it usually bitcoin moves alt kind of chill out then bitcoin chills out then then the alts move right some a lot of times they move together but when they really take off it's usually when bitcoin starts to to relax and consolidate so all i'm saying here is the last time we broke out of an all-time high we consolidated the time before that when we broke out an all-time high we also consolidated so i would suspect this time is no different and we get some consolidation yes some of the factors are different yes some of the the things are different but i would say this by monday or tuesday morning if we're 
starting to get a bigger pump, then it's going to look a little better for a 4-5, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But right now, it looks like an A, B, C, right? So an A, B, and a C. So we'll see if we get that flat. I mean, but when I look at XLM, it looks pretty bullish still. I mean, it's still sort of in its range in here, right? Here's the top of the range. Um, you have this sort of cup and handle, uh, this double bottom. You broke out. You quickly came back down to back test the bull market support band. Now we're sort of resting on top of the support area. And that resting kind of looks like a little, you know, a flag and a little bull flag here. So maybe we break out of here and complete the three wave move. So one, two, three. And then it would sort of look the same, right? Where you have this A, B, and then a C, or, a, or some type of flat pattern, right? Before you take off. Um, so it, it's sort of uh, up for debate on what's gonna happen. I would hope we get a correction or at least some consolidation some coins like XLM doesn't look like it needs it. Now, when I look at like Theta, and I specifically zoom out, say to the daily, you can start to see, right, these rejection wicks here. So you have a big candle, right? Here's a rejection. You have another candle, a wick, right? The wicks are, are long on top, short on the bottom. That's a classic sign that hey resistance resistance but that's okay right that's normal so we hit this resistance another one resistance right and now you can start to see these dojis popping up so it looks like momentum is starting to stall right you can see an impulse up and now you're starting to stall now this stalling can turn into something like that where we continue to pump right but um, oftentimes, it's just consolidating. Now, if it can consolidate, continue, great. Or if it can sort of flag out, boom, great. Or worst case scenario, right? We have to come down and back test certain areas, right? So uh, actually, let me zoom out again to the three day. I mean, just look at this chart. It's pretty, it's pretty big, right? You have this big one, two, and now you're potentially in the middle of the third wave. So the third wave can get a little bit bigger before you have that correction. Then we get that fifth wave. So either it can happen now, or we can pump up another wave, another uh, wave to the upside, then get that correction. So, um, you know, looking at the three-day chart, we are overbought. I mean, look how we're seriously overbought. So you would expect at least some consolidation. Maybe it doesn't happen this week, right? Maybe it takes another week, right? But usually what happens is um, the price starts to go in a range and then it starts to go into distribution and then it breaks down into the correction. And then it back tests whatever it needs to do, right? Because I was trying to count five waves in here. Um, and it looks like we have one, two, right? I would say either this is, again, one, two, all of this is three, four, and five. And in the middle of the fifth, you have uh, a one, two, three, four, five, right? So that's one way to count. Another way to say is this is one, two, and then you have one, two, three, four, five. That's three. So one, two, all of this is three. Then now we're flagging out for wave four. Then we get wave five. 
And then when you zoom out, that whole thing is a part of a wave three, right? Which is this right here. So then this whole thing would be a one. Then you have an A, B, C, a flat in the middle. And then this whole thing will be wave three. So th those are the options there. But either way, I, th I think a little correction is needed. And maybe we've already, maybe the time elapsed enough to where we got it. Um, so again, real quick, this looks like uh, one, two, that's wave one. So now we need to count five waves in wave three. Now you can do that by saying this is one, two, three, four, five. So that's wave three. So this is one, two, all of that's three. And now we're correcting for wave four, then we're gonna get wave five. And that whole wave that I just counted is part of the bigger wave three, which means once that wave three is finished, then that's when you get a much bigger correction, a much bigger consolidation before ultimately heading into that fifth wave, right? But you kind of want wave three to be much bigger and much closer to those retracement levels to have a better opportunity at breaking through. So for example, if I look at this here, I would really like it to see uh, one, two, and then the third wave get at least up to here, right? In the middle of, um, let me pull on the fibs here. At least to the, hopefully the 382, right? Of this wave, I know it's pretty deep, and that's the debate as well. Should you use log scale for these retracements? If I did that, we're right now at the 50%. So I would at least want it to hit uh, a wave three to be one, two, all the way up to the 618. So hope what I'm saying is hopefully wave three ends at $4.50. So say $4.50 right so that means if we want to get there then if I zoom back in so now we'll look at it again so this is a one two then we have one two three four five right so that's one two three okay fair enough so that whole wave is wave uh, is one, two, uh, I'm sorry, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So then we flag out for wave four, then we get wave five and wave five gets us up into that area. So then when I zoom out, right, when I zoom out, then the whole thing becomes a one, two, three. And that third wave gets us to this 618. Then we have a fourth wave and then we get that fifth wave, right? Something like this. And that fifth wave hopefully gets us way out of the retracement levels. So that's what I'm saying. Is that gonna happen? I don't know, I have no idea. But that's what it looks to be and that's what I would expect to happen. We'll see how that plays out. Maybe, like I said, maybe the third wave's already finished, right? Depending on how you count it, it's a little bit subjective. Um, we do have some, uh, let's see. So we had a nine before. I think nothing on the two day or three day. Okay, so there we go. So we have a three day nine, right? And this chart looks pretty good, right? Because it called the nine here on the buy, printed the red dots, we broke the range. So it seems like the three day nines are, are pretty accurate. We had a nine here, which then broke the range, right? We came back underneath it. 
and now we have another nine. And so it printed these red dots here, right? So usually a nine, you want a one to four candle correction, which means we're on the first candle. So, so approximately, uh, it could take up to two weeks to correct, maybe 12 days. So if each candle represents three days, this candle is already, you got another day, right? So you have one, two, three, and four, potentially. So a one to four candle correction before a continuation. Or something much bigger before a continuation. So either way, uh, I mean, look at this. You're on a nine cell, right? And you've been marching up pretty strongly. So I'm not saying it's going to top out or reverse. What I'm saying is, just like Solana, maybe a couple days of consolidation. If not, then let's break out Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week. And then we can get that final push and then sort of have that consolidation phase. So we'll see how it goes. Um, for me, you know, if, if you're an investor, it doesn't matter. If you're a hodler, it doesn't matter. I mean, the, these little bumps in the road, you know, it, you're you're doing it for the bigger picture. You're doing it for the bigger swing. You know, you're doing it for, right? If you're short-term trading, then it's a good take profit area, right? It's a it's a decent take profit area, right? And then you want to re-enter on the breakout, or maybe you get a six one eight retrace and and buy. Uh, do it because you can still come all the way back down here and back test the zone right it, it could happen so you range you break out you can come down and back test then continue higher doesn't have to but you know um so it really depends on what your strategy is this is not financial advice so don't listen to me just giving you my opinion um, so, you know, you had Solana divergence from the fourth and the fifth, you have Bitcoin sort of the history of it. So I made a case reluctantly, right? Supporting consolidation and bearishness. Now that doesn't mean I want that, even though I do want it because it would help further the price in the long run. And for me, I want momentum. And the way you get momentum is you have to cool down and recharge. It's like if you're at the gym and you're doing four sets of 10, right? By number nine, you're running out of momentum. So you need to re-rack the weight. You need to take a break. That way your muscles can continue the workout because your muscles are getting exhausted. They can't keep pumping forever, right? So, um, yeah, so we'll see if I pull the fib on this, on this wave here, and I come all the way up to the nine, let me put it back on regular scale. Uh, the 618 retrace is approximately a dollar. Uh, approximately a dollar eighty eighty between dollar eighty eighty five I would say so about a dollar eighty four dollar eighty five in that area is the six one eight retrace now the fifty is about two dollars and thirteen cents so these are all potential pullback targets if if we were gonna pull back if not then we consolidate and then push up for another wave right so there's a difference. You can sort of, if this is, um, let me get back here. If this is a one, two, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, then that means this is one, two, three. And if that's the case, 
then we consolidate for wave four and then push up for another wave five or for a wave five, right? And then you, what you would do is you would take this and you, then you would add the retrace up here, right? So let's say we get up to like around five bucks. Then you can say, yeah, now it looks like we have a correction, right? So this would be a one, two, all of this is three, four and five, right? Then you have an ABC or a big correction that gets us down to the 618 around $2.38, $2.84, contingent on getting this fifth wave, right? So we'll have to see. Either we can correct now or have another wave, then correct later. But like I said, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you're hodling, if you're investing, if you're trading, yeah, it kind of does because you kind of want to know. But I don't know for certain what it's going to be. But that's why you track it from the day to day, right? I mean, look at this. We got a green candle. We're back at 299. Maybe we have another pump. Um, uh, full disclosure, I took a partial profit on my trade, not my investment, not my HODL position, not my wallet, right? Not my cold storage, but on my sort of day trading um, or slash swing, swing trading, I took partial profit just to see, right? Um, there's nothing wrong with taking profit, especially if you're using leverage. For this trade, I did use leverage, right? So you got to protect your position. I can always jump back if it, so, and that's the thing people don't like, right? If you take profit and let's say the price shoots up, then you can say, oh, well, you missed it. Well, no, profit is profit, right? Um, I was happy with it. I took it and I'm waiting for an entry. Now, maybe I get back in at a higher price, but but that's different, right? So let's say the price pulls back, or let's say I took profit, right? Um, and then the price pull back, right? I say, okay, great. Um, it's pulling back. That's what I wanted. But then the price shoots up and it takes out the high right here. Now, if I'm a hodler, if I'm a spot investor, yeah, that would be upsetting because now you're paying a higher price. But if you're trading, it's not about where you get in at the price. It's about the percentage you make on the trade, right? So, and, it, and the percentage you make on the trade is all about the probability of the trade um, being successful, right? So if I entered here, thinking we're going to break out and we break down, that's not a good thing. But if I wait until we break out, right, to have more confidence in it, then maybe it might be a better entry, right? That's So that's sort of the example, not saying in real life, um, just as an example. Um, so personally, you know, if I put this on here, we do on the four hour chart, I mean, you can see the divergence here. You have this high and this high, so we're going up, but the RSI is sort of going down. Not too bad, not too bad, but it is trending down. Um, so I'm just gonna wait and see. It is the weekend, right? So maybe I'll uh, um, jump back in on some of that trade on Monday, right? Um, but I, again, I, like I said, if it takes off, no problem. That's why I, I have multiple positions, right? I have a hodling position, right? The investment. But then you also have a day trading and then more of a, a low leverage swing trading, right? If you're day trading, use a little bit higher leverage. If you're swing trading, you want to use a little bit lower leverage, right? So... Um, yeah, so when I zoom out on this and I go back to the four day and I remember clearly making videos right here saying this is a very good time to accumulate. And ever since then, um, 
uh, approximately up right now. Oh, from the wick, that's 260%. Right now, it's about 200%. So if you're trading and the market goes up over 200%, there's nothing wrong with taking profits. It's actually, you should take profit because this thing can easily just turn right back down, right? Um, now, like I said, if you're investing, if you're hodling, you don't care. It's not a big deal because we're, we're doing it for the much bigger trade right so the difference between is this to here that's nothing versus buying all in here and waiting until we get way up here but more so than that breaking out into a new all-time high right that's sort of where the big money is made is the hodlers right um so you got to know what you're doing you got to know what your strategy is and sort of how you want to play the game. For me, um, I got a couple different ideas. I mean, different routes on how I do it. So we'll see if we get we'll see if we get a correction. We hit three dollars. That's a nice round number. We ran up into this resistance. So there were so many things that said, OK, let's take some profit. Now, I didn't take it all off the table. I took some partial profit, right? So we ran up into this right in here. Um, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see if we can get through it. Um, if, if we take out, if we continue going up, hey, I'm a happy guy because my huddle position is great. And I still have some in the, in the trade. So that would be it for, for theta. Again, we can either flag out for a fourth and get that fifth. Hey, perfect. If not, we have a, a bigger sort of consolidation correction. That's also great, right? Because we're pretty far away from the bull market support band. We are approximately 130% away. So it wouldn't be such a bad thing if we started just chilling out a little bit, allow it to catch up and then continue higher, right? Or like I said before, we can get another hit to the high then consolidate, then continue higher. Either way, when you zoom all the way out on the macro, macro front, I'm still expecting higher prices. So we'll see uh, how it plays out. But I think that'll do it for today. Now, when I look at something like XRP and like I said, XLM, um, I did not take profits. Why? Because look where it's at. Look where it's at. It's barely above its bull market support band. It has not yet taken out this high, right? It hasn't taken out the high. Um, what was the other one? Q and T, same thing, right? Now, just comparing the two, like Theta, what did it do? It broke above the bull market support band. It came down here, it, it retested it, and then it shot all the way up here massively now q and t hasn't even broken the high it's barely off the bull market support band it's sort of in this retracement level so it's sort of like a wait and see what happens right so you know and then when you look at theta look at the difference we we here's the high we smash through that high that doesn't mean it can't keep going higher but you got to know when to pull profit right so I'm not rotating profit into other coins. I'm sort of waiting to see what happens. Um, it's sort of a wait and see moment. Um, so I think that's about it. I mean, like I said, with XRP, uh, it looks still decent bullish, right? Um, we could have some more consolidation. But I mean, if we lose the bull market support band, then we could um, have a bigger, right? We could have a bigger one, two, three, four, five, A, B, and a C. And in the C wave, we have one, two, three, four, and five. But I don't like how big this fourth wave is. So I'm a little conflicted, right? And I'm not doing anything until this bull market support band is lost. Look at this. That big liquidation event, we had that massive wick to the downside. But look, we closed after all that money got flushed out, which was an enormous amount, was I think it was more than the FTX 
if I'm not mistaken. I've heard someone say. Um, we still managed to close above the bull market support band. Then we had this candle, and now we're starting to trade up. Yes, we did run into resistance, so the, the, the bottom of these candles are resistance. We sort of need to maybe pull back down. And I wouldn't even mind us pulling down back into the bull market support band again before sort of taking off. And then if we have this one, two, three type of shape, I'm still skeptical because then it could turn into another flat, right? So you have the high, you take out the high, then you come down, then you go up. So then you have an A, B, C, then you go. Or maybe C stops here, right? So there's no reason for me to take profit on XRP because it hasn't yet performed to what I my targets are, right? And I'm not going to disclose all all targets, right? I do give away a lot of targets, but I'm actually planning on doing um, more personal targets later in the future. Uh, I might do like a members video. Um, you know, because it's it's takes some time, it takes effort to get these videos out, and uh, so um, looking at I'm testing out monetization. Um, so far, it's like you know, it's not really worth it. But um, if I do decide to make it a little more personal, with more sort of. Um, you know, more personal, not trading calls, because I'll never do trading calls, but more personal ideas with more specific targets. Um, I might do that in a members video. Um, so, you know, where it says click subscribe, but then some channels click join, and then you pay like, you know, $1.99 a month or, or, 99 cents or 4.99 or whatever i don't know what the prices are but something like that where you're like a member um i might do that just to to, to make it more you know worth my while because it is a lot of, it is a lot of time um but i'm still gonna do free youtube free um analysis because you know i i it, it's more than me right crypto is much bigger than me it's much bigger than all of us and we're all in it together and i'm just trying to do my part and helping newer sort of gauging to the newer audience and even if you are more advanced um but trying to help people get through these markets because they're look at this it's very volatile you got these up down up down up down uh, that can drive somebody who's brand new crazy and they can sell their position and then it goes up they lose it or they they buy too high and they get wiped out now this is not financial advice but it's good to get people's opinions and then sort of create your own right not just listen to my channel but i encourage people to listen to as many channels as you can and do as much research as you can so that way you're always challenging what I'm saying and then also vice versa so that we can all make educated decisions in our investment, right? So we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that happens. But one thing I wanted to point out is it looks kind of interesting here. You have sort of this shoulder, you have this head, maybe we're coming down and creating another shoulder here and that would sort of support the Solana pullback and other type of pullback. You have a one, two, three, Maybe we pull back a little bit, create this shoulder, right? And then we have uh, sort of a, um, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. We have this sort of inverse head and shoulders working here. And that's another reason they didn't take profit, right? Because we're still sort of in there. Now, I saw this um, developing. I didn't really want to say it too early um and that's another thing i would probably do more with the the members i would probably if i did it i'm not deciding yes or no yet but if i decide to i'll probably give out things closer to when i put it out publicly we'll see we'll have to see how it goes and then also it's a good way um 
you know, to support the channel if you wanted to be a member. Not saying I'm going to do it. I still have to think about, you know, sort of the route I want to take with this. Because um, it's all brand new. People go, well, you don't have a lot of subscribers. You should have more. And I appreciate that. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, you know, because people say you should have more subscribers. But you have to understand, uh, I only started really doing this in October of last year. So... The fact that I'm over a thousand subscribers just from October is completely mind blowing to me because I used to put out videos before October, but just on occasion, just whenever, not really taking it seriously. And I barely got, you know, so many views. I didn't think it would get this aggressive. And it was not just me, but it was a lot of people who helped on social media in the Theta community, respect much respect sharing the video really appreciates and then also the ultimate way is just to like the video and, and to leave a comment right but um yeah i i'm thinking crypto could be in some more consolidation we'll have to wait and see uh it's never a for sure thing ever but if i had to do a measured move on this inverse head and shoulders depending contingent on it actually being one then we can see uh, about 86, 87 cents on the horizon. And if we got there, then it would really look like this, which is this whole thing is a, uh, a trend line, a resistance line. And then you have a cup, right? Here's your cup. And then you have your handle. And inside the handle, you have an inverse head and shoulders, which is pretty interesting. Right. We'll see how it continues to play. Right. Um, now, on the flip side, you could say, well, no, this is bearish because this is a one, two. Right. Um, and this is a three wave pullback. Right. Uh, and now this is another uh, a one, two. Right. And then we're going to continue going down. But I don't really like that. Because it looks like it's already invalid because of this wave here. So this wave took out this high. Now it didn't take out this high. So it's a little um, it's a little interesting. We'll see how it we'll see how it develops. I mean if I flip the chart upside down, you can say, well, this is a wave one, this is a wave two, and now we're going up into wave three. But you can see it didn't break the high right and this is an inverted chart right it's upside down so when i say high i mean low low means high right um so you have this wave up wave down sort of this three wave move to the upside um and then this move back down so i think it can do something like this right which would be a head and shoulders which would cause it to break down um, so that's what it looks like to me um, this could be a one two and this could be another one two of the third wave right so as long as this wave doesn't take out this low so here's one here's two but this wave is only three waves so it's a little corrective right um, so anyway, let me flip it back. Uh, we're above the bull market support band. It looks pretty good. If I zoom in really, let's go to the one hour. Um, I just wish I just wish it would hold on a little stronger because you could see it gets above and then bam, it gets back down. But then the buyers come back up and then bam, it comes back down. But then the buyers step back up. So we really need to get away from the bull market support band. We really need to have strong conviction and strong, because these little dumps down here, yes, the buyers bought it back up, but you don't wanna keep doing that, right? Because then it's gonna get more weak, right? Um, so, XRP it looks like a one, two, three, four, five. Hopefully we have like a three-way pullback and then a continuation, right? Or maybe this was already a three-way move. So yeah, I'll I'll end the video now. Uh, I mean, even so going back to Solana, 
right? You have um, sort of this one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So this is one, two, all of this is three. Maybe this is a flat and then you get another five, right? And that would end that fifth wave before the consolidation slash correction starts to occur, right? Because, I mean, look at Solana. It's already way back up to this point over here, right? It's pretty high. Uh, how, how much did it go from the bull market support band? Approximately five, wow. That's another one I missed. 540%. Very strong. Right? So, again, the whole thing is a 1-2. Right? And this is a 1-2-3-4. And now we're in that fifth wave. So maybe wave 5 gets a little bigger. Right? And the whole thing would be 1-2. All of this is 3. Um... What would be really cool is if this one, two, three, four, five of wave three breaks the all-time high. Then we get a wave four pullback of a back test, then a continuation. That would be very bullish, even though I'm not holding it. Um, so yeah, I think one, two, three, four. And there is an argument to say that we have one, two, three, four, and now we're in five, but five is not even finished yet, right? Now, f five can be a little diag, but I don't think so. Um, maybe five is a one, two, one, two, and now we're setting up for a bigger wave three. This could be bullish. This is Now, this is the bullish case. This is why I'm conflicted. This is why I'm like, I don't know. I'd rather wait for Monday to get out a bigger, a better decision. Because we might we might still be in the middle of this fifth wave on some charts, right? So one, two, one, two, we're in the middle of three. Then we get four, five, four, five. And then that whole thing would be fifth, the fifth wave of the third wave. So it would look like this. So we have a one, two. And we have one, two, three, four, five. So then all of that's three. Then we get four. Then we get five. And that would be like sort of the cycle. That would be the, the, the cycle theory, right? Because if you look here, it's the same thing, right? We have one, two. Or you can say this is one, two. All of that's three, four, five. Something like that. And then the same thing's happening here. We have one, two. Now we're in the middle of this third wave. So we want the third wave to be as big and as powerful as possible because those are the waves that are really going to make the biggest impact. Because look at the fifth wave and then compare it to the third wave. The third wave was much bigger. Usually wave threes are the biggest. Right? Now fifth waves can be pretty big if the third wave isn't so big. So... Uh, and it, they call it an extended fifth. So yeah, there's there's uh, up or down, right? It's gonna go up, it's gonna go down. We don't know. <laughs> no, but seriously, I think uh, I think uh, there's there's a good case for both. My job isn't to say yes, it's gonna go up or no, it's gonna go down. It's to say, hey, here's the possibilities. Let's think about it logically. And as the days go on, let's rule out certain things that it isn't so we can get a more understanding of what it is if you're a trader. But if, like I said, you're a hodler investor, these little corrections, these little minor hiccups in the road, no big deal. As you say, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip and hodl on. Right. So I think that'll do it for this video. I made a case for the bears. I made a case for the bulls. It's up for you to decide which one of those cases you like better, right? Um, so yeah, we'll see We'll see how the next week goes. Uh, me personally, like I said, I'm sort of cheering for uh, a, a correction, but I don't care if the correction occurs after we get this sort of last, you know, sort of fifth wave, then we get the correction, that's fine. Or if we correct now, that's fine too. Either way, um, I think it's, it's coming soon, right? I mean, if you look at the 
weekly chart on certain coins, we have green candle after green candle after green candle. At some point, you're getting a red candle, right? So anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. It'd be so amazing if you can like, uh, subscribe, and make a comment. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.